I'd just like to welcome everyone to Zimmy's. Um, I'd like to give you a tour inside, but uh, you're here at our historic uh, trolley car station, and uh, the outside here is Zimmy's, and come on in and I'll show you what we have as our uh, guests visit Zimmy's. Come right this way. Uh, we do a celebration for Bob Dylan here in Hibbing, Minnesota every year for his birthday, May 24th. And uh, in 2005, we decided to dedicate a honorary star in our sidewalk. So welcome to Bob Dylan's place here in Hibbing, Minnesota, Zimmy's. Come right in. Okay, here we are inside. And what I'd like to do is welcome you by giving you the tour of Zimmy's. We have quite a collection of um, historic memorabilia for the town of Hibbing, for our vintage trolley car station building, and of course for our local hero and mentor, Bob Dylan. So uh, Bobby Zimmerman started his life here, and um, we've been very fortunate to meet all of you wonderful guests uh, coming here on a long sojourn and making it to Hibbing, Minnesota. So let's start the tour here. Should I go in? Um, we'll start with some photos. Um, way back in the day when Bob was here uh, cruising the streets of Howard Street, it would have looked somewhat like this. This is a Shell tire photo. And um, after our building was the trolley car station and Greyhound bus came into play, um, we became Shell tire. So uh, Shell. Uh, tire station back in the 40s, 30s here. Um, this would be a local photo of one of the old businesses back in 1945 in Bob's uh, era. This was the Lorenzo um, shoe repair and uh, they don't do that too much anymore but that was a business back in the day very similar to Zimmerman Electric which would have been Bob's family appliance store. Okay, um, we'd just like to show you the Varsity Theater uh, playbill. Back uh, in 2007, we were a part of the Wiseman Art Museum exhibit for Bob. It was a traveling exhibit called Bob Dylan's American Journey, and we got to play a bigger role here with it being uh, keyed on Minnesota. So we did a poetry reading with B.J. Rolson, and uh, we also did uh, interviews with uh, some of Bob's friends in high school. So that would be Zimmy's teen years and then they went into the music scene in Dinky Town down in Minneapolis. But it was really a great event and kind of put Hibbing on the map. So we were very proud of that. And B.J. Rolfson and Leroy Hoikala are now local heroes because of this little uh, varsity theater presentation. So come this way. On this wall, we have a little um, collection of uh, Bob's friends. Um, his original band was called the Golden Chords Band. And this photo with the drumsticks is his drummer from that time period. Leroy Hoikala, um, Monty Edwardson, and Bobby Zimmerman were a three-piece band. And uh, the story goes that Bob could chord great on the piano, and Leroy's drums were gold, so hence the Golden Chords. Um, Leroy still lives in Hibbing, and he's always happy to come down and meet guests, so feel free to make a visit with someone that knew Bob when he was still young and innocent and life was simple. The picture above is the original photo of when uh, the Hibbing High School was built. It's just a stellar building. It's just um, a castle in uh, the mining area here. It was built by the mines to encourage the town to move from its northern location. And it's really worth a tour when you're here in Hibbing, so we recommend that. Um, a couple of these 45s are reminiscent of the era of music back in the 50s. These were local bands um, that were the Reveliers and Little John and the Sherwood Men would have been around during the Golden Chords era. And what they used to do is go down to the cities, whether it was 40 below in the winter which Leroy gave us some wonderful stories about. Um, but these guys would all go down and they'd burn their 45s. And there's a wonderful 45 that the Golden Chords did that if you find it, it's quite a rare collectible. And uh, I think it's called Little Black Train. So if anyone out there gets their hands on that, we'd love it for our collection. <laughs> but that's a little history of music. 
Um, we've also been fortunate to find um, some historic photos of when they moved the town from the northern region here. It didn't move very far, but it was quite a feat to move houses. So you can see in this photo that that's how it was done. They loaded them up and hauled them over this way and also built a lot of the new things. Zimmy's was the original transportation mode. Um, the trolley car was very new in 1920 and that was uh, another way to encourage people to move. They would give you free public transportation to get across the area. So we really were a little cornerstone in the new community. Uh, the lower picture is actually from North Hibbing. When they um, moved everything, they um, knocked down buildings that were kind of established uh, in the original town, which would have been the city hall, the library, um, the school. So this is actually an original from the turn of the century that would have been a print hanging in the high school. We have local art on the wall by uh, Bob Hawking. So come and enjoy that. These are panoramics that were done by Aubin Studio. Um, this one is the town being built. So this is 1920. And this is a panoramic of Howard Street that you're actually seeing when you come down Howard. And um, you can see things are work in progress. Um, I don't think the high school is even complete at that time. So these are the other buildings that you're going to see when you walk downtown. Um, a tradition in the Northland, as well as most places that you go in small communities, are county fairs. And St. Louis County is no different than that. Um, they've had a fair here in the area for 100 years. And that's actually um, a real heavy-duty cardboard hard stock litho that was probably from 100 years ago from the original fairs. And it's a tradition that's still here today. So it's a local entity in, in the beginning of August always. Um, mining, of course, is our area, bread and butter. So the lower picture here is one of the mines that um, was around the web mine no longer exists, but it was just right outside of Hibbing. And this was quite common that there was many, many, many names of mines that were doing um, the labor of the land in mining. And now um, it's consolidated to a few names. Changing world, but that was what the area was for 100 years. Uh, the photo above we're very proud of. Um, Lance Williams, a young man here in Hibbing, acquired this photo of Bob, who it, it was taken by Bob's mother, Beebe. And you can't help but love this picture. It's uh, the aspiring uh, musician in his youth. And back in 1958, Bob would have been playing with bands and holding his uh, uh, Dano Electric Sears guitar, which probably was all he could get here in Hemming at the time. But he was pretty cool and um, just uh, poised for something more than being in a small town. So there's Bobby Zimmerman. OK, this backdrop is actually um, something we just acquired in the last few weeks. Um, we do a Dylan Day's Songwriters event. And Dylan Day's um, around Bob's birthday includes celebrations of all the arts. So uh, being a songwriter and a musician, of course, plays quite a relevant role in our celebration. So if you come to Zimmy's, um, always the Friday during uh, Dylan Days, you're going to find a big stage here. And this year we had Ellie Ritchie, Mike Ritchie's wife, uh, do a backdrop for us. She does all the theater backdrops. And we felt we needed one to uh, make people really pop and get the Bob Dylan feel. So we took one of our favorite songs, Forever Young, and uh, pop that up there so our musicians will feel very welcome and like they're in the right place doing their songs. So this photo we acquired probably almost 20 years ago and it's just a, a typical Hollywood image, if you will, but it's the three generations of music. We have Bruce Springsteen, Frank Sinatra, and of course our Bob Dylan. Bob looks a little like he's in his own world there. I guess they all three look like they're separate entities together, but um, everyone just loves this image because it's just so relevant to music. It just shows different um, um, periods of people doing their thing and doing it forever and ever. It's their life. So these three guys really emulate what you would hope the music world would be about. And uh, Bob looks pretty good there. So <laughs> um, the image below is actually 
an oil painting that would have also um, hung probably in City Hall or the library up in North Hibbing. So like we were talking, we try and find these items that are still local, that are from 100 years ago, and we try and keep them here in our area. Um, antiques and collectibles like this usually end up in a different market. They're, they're sent out not for sentimental and local, regional, reasons but just for what they are um, just because they're old pieces and um, Zimmy's is all about keeping these things here and keeping the heritage and letting people see um, what our town was all about and where it is today so that's one of those um, a lot of people will come to our town besides for Bob Dylan for a view of the Hallrus mine view it's a working mine that's just a little bit um, up to the north here of Hibbing. And this is a, a panoramic of that mine. Um, we have two. This one, I'm trying to remember, is a later one from... Oh, this one is the 1907. So this is 100 years ago, uh, the original um, open pit mine up at the Hall Russ mine view. So see that and then go up there today and you'll see a whole different look. The clock at the top there is um, a clock that went on the tour for EMP out of Seattle and it was the Bob Dylan's American Journey 1956 to 1966. Um, Bob Dylan was the collaborator of that uh, traveling exhibit and he made sure to include all of his high school years here in Hibbing. So when they were acquiring items they came to town that was in our very early stages of collecting local memorabilia for Bobby Zimmerman but that's a Zimmerman electric clock and that went on tour for four years with the exhibit along with Libba theater tickets which I'll explain a little bit further later but that's an actual appliance from the store that Bob's dad would have worked at. Um, underneath that another historic photo um, I think it's 1912 it's a 4th of July parade in North Hibbing and um, it really gives the flavor of that era the streets are dirt still it was still a mining town and not so developed until it moved over this way to the south but it's just really a uh, local flavor and uh, again we try and put things up that are photos or things that were from that um, different world um, north of here we like to just show off this um, piece that we also picked up from an antique dealer locally um, she said there were four panels um, that were actually hung in the school in North Hibbing and three of them left the area and this one she absolutely fought to keep here and it is King Lear it's um, done by an artist on the East Coast that was very uh, well known for doing murals and this is actually a hand colored print um, you have to see it in person to do it justice it is just the most beautiful thing and again a hundred years later we're able to show it off and really be proud of it I'm gonna read the artist's name his name is Edwin Austin Abbey and uh, it's a name that doesn't always stick in my mind but he's just a profound um, Victorian uh, realism artist and you can look him up they're just amazing works so we're very proud to have this print saved Okay, the photo of our Hollywood starlet is one I like to show all of my guests. Um, this is Echo Star Hellstrom, and she happens to be Bob's girlfriend from high school. She was a little younger than Bob, and I think they dated for a couple years. And um, Bob's always interesting. Um, he wasn't exactly the rebel without a cause, but he really liked to be that guy. So he usually chose friends that um, maybe weren't... Um, the typical high school friends where they were in all the sports and doing all the academics he kind of picked the kids that would get on their Harleys and ride up and down Howard Street and go listen to music in the jukebox and jam and at the same time he wasn't a student he was wonderful but the people that he picked with were very independent and very free-thinking and kind of uh, did their own thing so um, Echo was one of those she may have been called the gal from the wrong side of the tracks, um, but Bob was very much um, uh, very happy to be with her because she was very unique and very honest, and we've grown to love Echo. So that's his gal. 
Um, this um, is a picture of the Hellrest Mine view again. Um, the original picture from 1907, this one is from 1924, and you can see that the rings are more of them. It's more developed than the original photo, so mining just kept going and kept progressing. Um, this is a picture of Bob. We love getting these. This would have been also, if you look at the guitar photo, you can see the same wallpaper and curtains behind. This is from his house um, over on 25th and 7th. And um, that's a young Bob, probably 1956 or 55. And um, everyone always notices he had the full cheeks, uh, you know, a little different look than when we get to see him 10 years later in the 60s. Um, the next picture is a historic picture of Bennett Park. Um, Bennett Park is still with us. It's just a few blocks here from Zimmy's, but the original Bennett Park had a zoological garden, a beautiful botanical garden. Um, it had a, a big amphitheater for concerts. Um, it was the proverbial town center and it was another area that was just developed above and beyond what anyone would have imagined um, to try and bring uh, the town into a different era and so this was from 1921. The next photo is a, another local business. Um, this would have been Doherty Funeral Home of all things but um, this picture is relevant because before this they would have had horse-drawn funeral cars and so this was the motorized time these were the first motorized hearsts and so that was big Doherty's is still here today a hundred years later so um, that again is local color and local flavor across the street from here is the Android Hotel um, there is stories of Bob having his bar mitzvah there and um, there's someone else that'll know more of the flavor of that. But anyway, you can go into the Android, uh, take a peek in the lovely hall as you walk in just to see um, it was a grand hotel. And again, that was another um, mining building that was built to house all the uh, dignitaries that ended up coming here because the mines were such a strong business entity. So very well known. I'm doing this backwards a bit, but this photo is our original building. This is when um, Zimmy's was built as the trolley car station in Hibbing. The two doors on the left uh, would go up and you can see the tracks going in and that's where the tracks uh, would bring the trolleys in to park for the night. Where the uh, guy is standing was where the waiting station was where the customers would go in and hang out until they were uh, ready to leave. So that's our bare bones building. Pretty nice for just something as uh, simple as a trolley car station. And again, when Greyhound bus came into existence, I guess they didn't need the trolleys. So what they did was they made us into a, a gas station. So we were Shell Gas, General Tire, Horn Electric. We were totally automobile oriented, very industrial. Um, just wonderful memorabilia in this picture. Uh, we've been able to acquire a few of the items, but uh, would love to get some more of the vintage shell. That, that really was what our building was. These pictures are kind of fun for um, the people that come from out of the area that um, don't know a winter in northern Minnesota. Lots of snow usually. So this would be a typical look of our downtown uh, in that time period when Bob was here, or actually earlier this photo um, back in the 30s for Christmas and that's a, a flavor of our area. This one is also um, nighttime uh, downtown Howard Street. Of course, the Shell Tire is right over here on the right, but that's kind of a look-see down Howard Street. And Bob always wrote lyrics in his early years about um, what um, Hibbing was like, where you could stand on one end of town and look down and see clear to the other, which is probably true on Howard Street. So that's a little flavor. Uh, hunting, of course, is big in the area. Um, this is a great uh, photo of our room that we just gave you the tour of. Um, it's our formal dining room, but this is what it looked like when Bob was here. It was a Shell Tire station. The skylights and the overhead lights are still identical. Otherwise, it's hard to believe they could transform it the way they did. So that would be Zimmy's. And I'll walk you back over.
Should we go up above? Come on up. So if you haven't gathered, we're big collectors here at Zimmy as we try and gather things that are relevant to what our collection is. This overhead metal sign was the original Furlong Oil Company sign. They sold cars, gas, fixed vehicles, and that would have been from the early 50s, so a period of time when Bob was here. These two windows, they look like frames, but that one and that one are actually windows from Bob's house. Um, Greg and Donna French were nice enough when they were replacing windows to tell us that we should have Bob's bedroom windows at Zimmy's. So we creatively put a couple photos in them and uh, hung them up. And so there are stories about Echo visiting Bob and she's verified that, uh, yes, she did sneak out these windows a few times when his parents came home unexpectedly. <laughs> so we always say if the windows could talk. Um, you'll see memorabilia as we walk through here. We have sheet music and photos and posters and uh, albums and it's a collection that spans, you know, from the early days of Bob, uh, like the Saturday Evening Post would be a very early piece um, all the way to more modern times. Uh, the collection that we have, you'll see all sizes are actually um, uh, from the good graces of a gentleman named John Bushy and John lives in Duluth. Minnesota and he's an avid Dylan collector. So he had so many things that he wanted to present that he allowed us to purchase and we've put things up. Traveling Wilburys. Um, we have a Bob Dylan signed guitar and during Dylan days um, we just had all our artists a couple years ago sign the guitar so that's what's up there. Um, we have a local foundation called the Hibbing Foundation. And um, it's um, documented that the Hibbing, historic Hibbing High School Auditorium, where we do concerts for Dylan Days, has a ghost. And so during, um, two years ago during Dylan Days, the Hibbing Foundation decided to um, do something with the ghost seat where we, you can purchase a seat and um, it helps with the upkeep of the auditorium, which is just beautiful. So anyway. Um, Zimmy's and Leroy Hoikala purchased the Go Seat and again we recommend everyone to go over to the high school and see that auditorium. It's just out of this world. Um, the Highway 61 sign that is actually an original sign from a dead end um, route from way back in Grand Marais. A good friend of ours who comes for Dylan Days every year um, said that we would be the perfect housing for that. So he loaned it to our collection and we're very proud to have it. Um, when we saw the traveling exhibit for Bob, they had a Highway 60 sign, uh, 61 sign. It wasn't as cool as ours, so we were very proud of this sign. Um, I'm not sure if you can get a good look at it, but that's also an original poster from Don't Look Back. I believe it was from 1965. And what a great documentary by um, Penny, Penny, I forgot his name, but anyway, uh, you know, it was one of those early films that Bob did during his period of time that uh, made him a recognizable force out there and people really related to that. So we're very proud to have that original poster. You're going to see some artwork. We do a visual arts competition uh, during Dylan Days and we try and purchase um, an artwork at least one from each year so um, you're going to see some artworks that are either of Dylan or uh, something that represents Bob. Um, as we're looking at this back wall um, you're going to see that large banner that was also a part of the traveling EMP exhibit. Um, again we, we just uh, feel like things that are relevant to Hibbing that we were involved in are good things to have. That was a mock-up um, it's not really um, an original concert, but it was put together um, to promote the exhibit that they had going. Images. Um, as you look down from there, you're going to see Bob on a Harley Davidson. He, these are um, photos that we were lucky enough to have. Uh, they are from growing up here in town in Hibbing. Um, 
So Bob's on a Harley and his friend Dale Butang is standing next to him. And that's actually Dale's motorcycle, it's not Bob's. And he's parked in his driveway over there at his house. And I'm sure Beatty was the photographer, his mom, so she took that photo of the two friends. But Bob wanted to show this Harley to his mom and dad because he wanted one, because Leroy had one and Dale had one and he had to have a cycle. So Leroy um, is cousins with uh, Dale and he said, Yep, about a month later, Abe, Bob's dad calls me up and said, come on with us, we're going to buy uh, Harley Davidson for Bob, and I need you to come with us and look at it. And so he went, and Leroy said those old bikes had suicide shifts, which are up high, and Bob had no idea how to ride that cycle. He didn't know how to drive it. So uh, Leroy drove it home for him, and then he had to, tra had to show him, teach him how to ride his own cycle, but he did, and they went out cruising a lot. So. They had a great time, so that's a wonderful vintage photo of that time period. Um, the lower one beyond that is the Golden Chords. Um, we have a Hibbing Memorial Arena, which is just two and a half blocks up from here, and also a great place to visit if you're touring Hibbing. Um, if you go in the very lower area, there's something called the Little Theater, and it's actually a classic theater that back in the day they would hold events. And there's um, the Golden Chords, Leroy Monty and Bobby, um, playing on the little theater stage and it's really just a lovely um, view of that time period and they've kept it really original so I recommend that. Um, some of the other things, of course Bob still has a love affair with cycles to this day so we have some vintage Harley tanks, that's a vintage um, racing scene from local um, Harley racers in, in the turn of the century. Um, we collect vintage instruments, so you're going to see a lot of guitars on the walls that just have to do with the time period of the 50s, and uh, they're kind of relevant to Bob's career. Um, you'll see posters. Uh, there's Bob Dylan touring with um, um, Paul Simon. Um, some relevant photos. I think um, people don't realize that um, the Bob image is what's so strikingly important to him and his career too, besides being the best songwriter you could ever have. Um, he had people that took striking images of him that are kind of ingrained in the American music culture. And we have a few things like that up there that just really are the icon of Bob in the 60s. I'm above the jukebox here. Um, there's Bob on his triumph back in the Woodstock days, but um, the picture next to it would be the Rockets, and that's where Leroy's band was after um, the Golden Chords, after Bob left town. Um, we should probably look up above here. Um, you're going to see lit up marquee letters, and they're uh, the Libba Theater. Um, Bob's uncles owned the movie theaters in Hibbing, so Bob and his younger brother David um, would go to see the movies for free. So they did take in a lot of that. And, um, you know, in the 50s, that would have been the thing to do, to go to the movies. So James Dean was really his mentor, and um, the kids all kind of aspired to do something more with their lives than just what their parents did, and they got that inspiration from the movie theaters. Um, the Libba was named after Bob's great-grandmother, Libba Edelstein. So that would have been on his mom's side of the family. So these um, letters would have ended up being scrapped and uh, not existing, but we were lucky enough to find them and put them to good use and let people view them and give a history of Bobby Zimmerman here in Hibbing. Um, speaking of Bobby Zimmerman, we have a picture of Bob when he actually um, he was raised in Duluth until he was about four and a half, five years old, and then they moved back here to Hibbing. And that's a picture of him here in Hibbing, but he was only about, oh, two and a half, three years old. And um, he, they were visiting friends because Beatty, his mother, was actually from Hibbing originally, and all her family and friends were here. So she would regularly come back with Bob when he was a little guy to visit. So we call that baby Bob, and isn't he adorable? <laughs> Um, the picture, again, next to it is from Seattle, Washington, Bob Dylan's American Journey. And once again, um, Hibbing sometimes can get bad press because originally when Bob left the area, he never wanted people to know where he was from. And that was more a protection thing and to keep anonymity in his early career. But as you can see by the dates, 
Uh, he didn't leave Hibbing till 59, so he included Hibbing in this mm -hmm. wonderful exhibit um, to make sure that his hometown was recognized. So that kind of discredits anything that's negatively said. Um, again, a wonderful salesman sample of a harmonica, tambourines, and guitars. Um, we have Greyhound bus memorabilia, and that's another thing I recommend. Um, what a beautiful logo, um, the Greyhound lines. These were, um, would, would have hung at places where the bus stopped, and um, a lot of people nationwide, of course, got to know the Greyhound lines. So we're very proud of that, and that's another good location while you're in Hibbing to go take that in. I'll walk you to the next room. We acquired this during the Dylan Days Art Contest. Somebody actually submitted this and we just thought it was the most adorable thing. Um, this is somebody sitting in the dentist chair. Dr. Schwartz was a dentist that was across the street from us. And um, he actually said to this uh, gentleman, Skip, who was sitting in the chair, there goes that Zimmerman kid, he'll never amount to anything. And Skip, being Bob's age, said, don't criticize what you can't understand. And um, it's a perfect example of the generation gap, you know. It was uh, getting close to the 60s and things were changing and rock and roll was happening and they were hearing it up here. And uh, it was a whole generation of kids transitioning. Um, there's a wonderful piece of sheet music, again, image of Bob in the 60s. Up above there is Apollo. They were the original Harley dealers in Hibbing, and it's just such a great, cool Hibbing vintage picture. So you can see why Bob found his love affair with the cycle here <laughs> in town. Um, when we get into Zimmy's, more memorabilia. Um, there's Leroy Ho Hoikala's um, Golden Chords drum. Um, we have um, been having a really good time going to see Bob, so we'll take a shoebot bus to different uh, concerts in Minnesota. So we've got those playbills signed from the bus people, probably 50 or, or more. Again, um, you're going to see some collection of magazines, Dylan artwork, albums that are relative posters. My husband, Bob, and I were fortunate enough to meet um, a couple of the photographers, John Cohen being one of them, and Daniel Kramer, and we bought some um, prints uh, from John. But they were just the early uh, images of Bob, and these two artists, and then quite a few others, just were so relevant in creating that visual icon that you're seeing on our walls. So they're very important in the history of Dylan. Here's another interesting piece to the collection. This is the original desk that Bob Dylan's teacher, B.J. Rolfson, would have graded all these papers that he wrote on. Um, B.J. was the consummate teacher. Um, when people meet him during Dylan days, um, they are just so impressed with what he would have taught Bob in high school. You have to remember that Bob didn't go on to college. He didn't, or he went on to college, but he never attended a college class. <laughs> um, he pretty much went down to the U and never did go. So um, his formative training was here at the Hibbing High School. And I don't think people realize until they come here the relevance of that um, education here. And BJ would have taught him all the classics of literature and um, he has an insatiable appetite for art literature and he just has done his own personal sojourn of reading and learning. So we like to think that BJ's desk is a mystical piece here at Zimmy's and we uh, enjoy having it. 
Um, we had another gentleman, his name is Dave Engel, come to Hibbing. Uh, he's an author and he does a lot of books of history. So his book was created more or less about the history of Bob Dylan. And it's called Just Like Bob Zimmerman's Blues, Dylan in Minnesota. And he's, it's just an excellent book. I think it's out of print right now, trying to get it republished, but talks about Bob and the town. So it's a good one to read. As we walk through here, you're going to see album, poster, album, poster, album, poster. Uh, and lots of sunshine in Zimmies, so you guys can enjoy the soak up the rays. Um, another Another part of the collection that we'd like to sh point out and show is um, a street sign that we obtained. Um, if you go down to Bob Dylan's um, house, you'll see that from Howard Street down there, about four blocks, is now kind of subnamed Bob Dylan Drive. And this street sign was the original street sign from the corner of his house, probably from 1920. Um, and it's 25th and 7th. And uh, it's just classic to the time period. You know, we're going on 100 years ago that the town moved. And um, that's Bob's Corner. And uh, a lot of things went on there. So we always like to uh, keep things that are relative to the house. Um, we. We try here at Zimmy's to um, keep the idea of um, inspired musicians going, so we uh, will at the frontier of Zimmy's do live performances every Thursday lately. We've been having songwriters uh, perform their own original stuff and open jams, and um, it's just nice to see the arts alive here in Hibbing, and we do that in the um, flavor of Bob that he would have loved, knowing that we are generating youth and uh, people to be continuing to do what they love to do. So for us, that's an inspiration. This is an interesting piece. Besides the triumph uh, that we know he supposedly had his accident on, um, this gentleman um, that's pointing at us in the picture below um, Dublin, Ireland. Um, we hear this a lot from the locals. They'll take a trip overseas and um, end up somewhere like Dublin. And they mention they're from Hibbing, Minnesota, and people that are Bob Dylan fans know that Bob was from here. So this guy said, I will give you the most wonderful tour of Ireland if you do one thing for me, put my picture up at Zimmy's. So that was a pretty easy request. And um, I've had more stories like that where uh, people recently came back from like uh, Sweden or Finland or somewhere, uh, Scandinavian, and uh, their tour guide would be a Bob Dylan fan and they would just be keyed on all through the trip because they were from Hibbing, Minnesota. So he's really put the town on the map in a very positive light. He's done wonders with his career and that just shines on us here in this little town of Hibbing. <laughs> 